Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from My Heat. It's been a little bit since I put out a video. Uh, it's been kind of crazy. Work's gotten real busy since I come back from my visit from Chirpies and the Algonquin uh, Mill Festival. And then we had uh, a storm pass through. Um, uh, it was part of the, uh, I guess, the Tropical Depression or whatever. And we literally in our county have got thousands of trees down. Um, a lot of the community was out with, without power for more than a week. And so we're finally starting to recover from that. So th things have just been crazy. But uh, anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there. So uh, tonight I want to give you a, uh, a little bit of an update on um, the milling machine. I've been working on it off and on. Um, most everything now that needs to be painted uh, is painted. There are a few items left to, um, left to paint, like the gearbox for the auto feed and um, the release uh, uh, arms and things like that for the, uh, you know, that kick off the auto feed. So there are, there are a few little things that need to be uh, uh, painted yet. Everything else has been uh, degreased, de-rusted, and I'm getting real close to um, um, starting to put that uh, back together. So uh, let me show you what I've got uh, done and uh, what uh, there is to do and, and some other things that I want to talk about. And then hopefully uh, some of you guys can leave me some comments down in the uh, uh, doobly-doo, as AVE likes to call it, down in the comment section, uh, what you think about some of the stuff that I want to uh, mention tonight. So let me uh, get the camera in position and uh, we'll uh, start talking about what we got going on. So I guess the first thing to talk about is the column. Uh, the column has been uh, stripped, uh, painted, degreased. Uh, this, I have pulled the spindle out. I've also pulled the bearings, uh, you know, the bearing cups out of the, uh, of the uh, column. I'm going to show those to you here in a little bit here and uh, explain to you why I've done that and uh, some of the things that I, I plan on doing. All right, so uh, this is obviously the biggest single piece other than the base uh, drip pan that it sits on. It's painted. I'll show that to you in a minute. So I'm just going to uh, put the camera. I got stuff sort of scattered, so I want to just point in the general direction and, and uh, talk about the, uh, the bits and the parts and, and uh, just so you got a good idea of, uh, of what's where and, and what we're doing. So let me position the camera and, and to the next bunch here on the table, and uh, I'll bring you right in. Okay, so what you're seeing here is, uh, you know, this is the pulley for the auto feed and uh, the auto feed gearbox. Of course, it still needs to be painted. Um, the overarm support, motor support, lead screw. Um, here's the center for the uh, overarm. Um, here's the uh, hand wheels. Uh, you can see that they've been painted. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have painted them black or some contrasting color. Uh, I still have to uh, clean up the rims, but like I said, this is a work in progress. Uh, there's the uh, saddle feed screw, uh, saddle nut and stuff. So there's a few pieces here that uh, need to be um, some attention given to, you know, some stuff that needs to be shined up. And, and then of course I have this one big feed crank and if we look real close, I guess you can see how horribly pitted that is. So I'm trying to think of what I'm going to do with this. This one's obviously going to get painted, but it's really rough on the fingers. I think um, Either I want to fill it in and shape it with some body filler or uh, some JB Weld. So any suggestions there, put them down in the comments. I'd be glad to hear it. There are a few parts that I'm going to have to make for the machine. Um, we'll get there. And then here's the, here's the feed uh, release mechanism and stuff that's going to have to have some real work done on that. And, but I think what I'm going to do is address those as I, as I come to them. So let me, uh, let me get the camera in position to the next bunch of uh, bits and pieces. Okay, so over here on this cabinet here, I have um, uh, quite a bit of the parts. Here's the drip tray, it's all painted. Uh, the plate, uh, or the cover that goes on the side of the machine. I have the knee, uh, the motor support, uh, the motor bearing support, the end arm, um, uh, the overarm uh, support. Uh, casting that holds the center and whatnot. Over here, you know, I have the uh, table, I have the saddle, I got some feed screws and uh, just some other miscellaneous. Uh, this is the release uh, for the auto feed. And I got some miscellaneous uh, parts and bits over here, some of which uh, will have to be repaired, uh, maybe even replaced. But again, I think what I'm going to do is um, as we go through it, I will. Um, you know, address those issues as I as I go. 
So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is actually the uh, spindle and the bearing. So let me get that set up and I'll bring you right back in. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about here is the spindle. I pulled the spindle out of the machine. Of course, the bearings were pressed on it at the time. Uh, there is a lot of corrosion uh, on the spindle, but no, um, no hard pitting, uh, you know, where it matters. I am, I do have some precision stones that I bought from Steve Lang and, and, uh, if you guys are interested, uh, you should check out uh, Shark River Machine. Uh, Steve has uh, two different sizes. Um, I, I would reach out to him. They're going to be quite handy in this project. But what I'll do is I'll give this, uh, I'll give this a light stoning uh, before I press the new bearings on. But why did I uh, pull the old bearings out? Well, if uh, we look, hopefully the camera pick it on up. You see that there's some marring in the bearings hopefully that will pick up I'm not real sure you know with the light and everything um, and I could sort of feel it when I rolled the bearing in there you know but any any uh, I mean it feels pretty good you know feels mostly good but I mean if there's a slight little bit of uh, of uh, pitting or something like that that's just going to translate into uh, my work Okay, that's the back. This is the back one, and then here's the front one, um, and we'll see that it's actually it's 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 worse. Um, I don't know how well they show up, but uh, so I bought new uh, I bought new uh, cones and bearings, and uh, I have those right over here. And for for you guys that are interested, um, the the bearings for the uh, now remember I have a uh, it's a Burke number four uh, my my column is stamped B-100-4 right uh, it's Tempkin uh, 11157 is the cone and 11315 uh, is the cup for the I, I think that's the front and then the let's see let me just make sure yeah these are the front bearings bearing and cup and then the rear bearing and cup is a 19138 and a 19283 for the bearing and the cup. So uh, these are new, but I, I won't put these in until um, I'm ready for them to go in. Or, I mean, I won't open them up until I'm ready to actually install them. So uh, I want to shoot a big thanks out to uh, Art Eckstein, who, uh, who uh, gave me a lot of information on Temkin bearings and, and why they sell the cones and the cups separately. So uh, it makes sense now. It didn't before to me. You know, I would think that that would just be the bearing, you know, uh, something that you would buy. But that's not the case. All right. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is um, uh, a topic that some of you guys may be interested in or you may not be interested in. But let me get the camera in position and, and we'll have a go at it and see what happens. Oops. Sorry about that. So while I was at uh, Chirpy's, um, you know, Chirpy had a, a straight edge and a, uh, uh, well, I, I guess two straight edges, you know, the, the regular, I forget what you call them, you know, the, uh, Chirpy put down the uh, um, blow, you know, the, the, the straight edge that you had printed up or that you had cast up and then this one. And Chirpy, you know, gave me some uh, scraping lessons, right? And I had scraped before um, years ago reading Gingery's, uh, David Gingery's uh, book and never really understood it, never really made any progress. Um, but like I said, Chirpy gave me some scraping lessons and uh, so I started scraping this uh, straight edge in and uh, it's, it's, not, it's not done yet. It's got some more work that I need to do it, uh, do on it. And I have a, uh, uh, you guys probably seen, you know, seen me using it before. You know, I have a 12 by 18 uh, uh, surface plate. Uh, it's just shop grade, um, but it's plenty flatter than anything I've got. And uh, so the idea here is that uh, I think at a minimum, maybe I'll want to make sure that uh, my dovetails, uh, bring this up here. Uh, hopefully you can see that. So, you know, my machine has these dovetails on the side and, and, and way. So, you know, you have a, you have a, a guiding way, you have a, a gibbed way, and then, a, and then the flat ways. Uh, I like to make sure that these are, uh, you got uh, 
uh, normally what you would do, you would scrape them in until they were parallel and they had so many bearings, bearing points uh, per square inch and, and uh, that sort of thing. But before actually that can, any of that can happen, I want to have to do some tests with the spindle. And that was another part of the reason why I got the new bearing. So when I put the spindle back in uh, with the new bearings, um, I'll do some uh, run out tests and, uh, that, and some radial tests and stuff like that. And if everything is good, then I think we're going to move on and maybe do some, um, some scraping. So uh, Chirpy has uh, very kindly loaned me this 12-inch uh, uh, straight edge that he had cast. And uh, I think it would help maybe if I move the camera and got you back in frame. Uh, that he had cast here. Um, to use along with my surface plate to uh, maybe get this thing uh, scraped back in um, to at least better than what it is uh, if I feel comfortable doing it. Um, so uh, look creations if you're watching this uh, and you have some words of advice or uh, wisdom that you wish to impart on uh, not how to do it because I know you you really say this is not how to do it, this is just how I've done it. So. Uh, how, how you've done it versus how it looks like I'm doing it. And uh, if you see any pitfalls or anything like that, pass them along. As, as far as that goes, anybody else got any scraping experience, when we get to that point, um, let me know. So let me grab a couple of other things and uh, I'll be right back. So in addition to loaning me the scraper, Chirpy, I mean uh, the straight edge, Chirpy was nice enough, nice enough to give me three scrapers. These are carbide uh, scrapers. I got a, a nice wide one got one here that's a little narrower and then I have one here that's been ground down to get into uh, into dovetails. Um, I got a little grinder that or a little motor that I want to set up um, to put a, um, a diamond wheel on so I can sharpen these. I still got to do that. I got an ink roller and I have some Prussian blue oil paint and then I have some Dicom high spot blue. Uh, my next question is should I find some sort of yellow paint? Can I get like some yellow ochre or whatever color yellow or something from the uh, oil paint from the craft store at, as a contrasting highlighter? Because what I noticed when I was at Chirpy's was that uh, when you're using a very thin coat of bluing um, and you're rubbing uh, to pick up that blue, uh, it's it's pretty hard to see. So I'm thinking some contrasting color would be good. It could be just that I'm an old fart and I can't see, right? So um, there's one more thing about the scraping that I want to mention and uh, and I have a question I want to ask you guys and, and we'll get back to that. So let me, let me get this stuff put back away and I'll bring the camera back in and show you the next little piece. Okay, for any of you guys that have um, you know, been kind of involved in the shop for a while or you're, you're exploring and learning about things, uh, you soon discover that uh, Edward F. Connolly has a book um, called Machine Tool Reconditioning and Applications of Hand Scraping. And this is sort of like the Machine Tool Reconditioning Bible. This book was printed in 1955. It's no longer in print. Uh, and if you do a Google search, you can find it as PDF form um, or in PDF form on the internet. Now, uh, what I discovered reading the book, it's a, it's a little over 500 pages and uh, it's very detailed. And the way that it's broken down is, uh, you know, each chapter, for example, like this is chapter 23, so I have section 23, um, 24, uh, paragraph 24 here, right? Objective and objective is a term used to at this book, refers to certain blah, 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 right? So the whole book is uh, divided into chapters and each chapter is um, broken down into paragraphs and what you'll see is that uh, as you read the first half of the book it's uh, it's it's application ideas how to do how to sharpen what you're looking for uh, different terms and things like that uh, so that when you get to the second half of the book which is uh, machine reconditioning for um, uh, a lathe, uh, uh, horizontal mill, vertical mill, uh, uh, cylindrical grinder, grind, stuff like that. You know, how, how they're reconditioned and the tests that you need to perform. Uh, constantly refer back. It might say, hey, see um, paragraph uh, 1725. So you'd be, you know, if, if you're reading it electronically, you know, you got you to scroll back and figure out, well, what page is 1725? 
and you know you you'll go back and forth like that and it's it's almost impossible to read so um what worked best for me was just to print the dang thing out right now granted it's 529 pages or something like that but i did print it duplex okay but now my real question is um i bound this book uh, uh perfect bounded it's a pretty simple process and there's a lot of old books that are out of print that you can get pdf copies for i guess what i'm asking is is there any interest does anybody want to know how to take one of these books uh you know uh, pdf books and see i mean look this is uh this is this, this is you know this is held together this is quite well and it's not coming apart right uh is anybody interested in um knowing how to do a perfect bind or, or you maybe even stitch up some signatures and bind uh, an old book that they've printed out that they would kind of like to have on the bookshelf. Now I know the younger folks they don't mind reading on a pad or a PC or a tablet but now you know I'm an old fart and old farts man I tell you what there's something about paper that is just as romantic as your first girlfriend. Maybe it's a different book I'm thinking about. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so if you're interested, uh, let me know uh, down in the comments, and and I'd, I'd be willing to con uh, do a few videos on, you know, how to uh, make book cloth. This is book cloth um, that's on here, uh, so you don't have to buy it. It's cheap to make. Um, you know how, uh, how to make wheat paste uh, for pasting up the uh, the end papers, uh, tipping on the end papers. Um, you know the cloth that goes uh, into the backing and the and the and the glue and whatnot. The only thing I didn't do on this book, I probably should have, is I, I did not trim the text block. This is the paper bit in the middle is considered the text block, and I probably should have trimmed it. But you know what? This is this book is going to live in the shop, and I expect it to get plenty dirty. So, like I said, this is just a rude and crude. Um, hopefully, I don't know if you can even see the whole book there. Um, it's just a, a rude and crude copy of the book that I can keep in here. I can throw over to whatever page um, you know I need open and bookmark it, put post-it notes or or whatever. Okay, and uh, so again, like I said, if you guys are interested in something like this, um, uh, let me know. I am going to use this book as uh, the basis of of conditioning my little Burke milling machine. It's a very small machine, um, so I don't think I'd be overworked. You know, it's not a task like uh, uh, Matt from Look Creation has, has undertaken. Although, uh, Matt, if you're watching, I, I don't know if you watch my videos or not, but uh, those, uh, those videos have been very, very insightful. All right, so let me, uh, let me position the camera. I got a, a couple things I want to say in closing, and, um, and I'll let you guys out of here. All right, guys, I know that uh, it's been a while since I had a, a little Burke Mill update. I have been working on it. Uh, my problem is that I could get uh, 30 minutes here, an hour there, maybe an hour and a half there. And if I have the choice of dragging out a video camera and, and recording or getting a little work done, it's been a little bit more um, uh, rewarding for me uh, to just get a little work done. And that way I got a little something to show for it when I do actually have a little extra time uh, in the shop that I can record. So I think the next thing that uh, I'll be doing on the mill uh, will be installing the new Temkin uh, cups and bearings on the uh, spindle. Uh, I'll stone the, uh, 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 the spindle, make sure there's no burrs. Uh, you know, I, I do have some precision stones that be uh, good for that. Uh, and then uh, once the uh, s uh, spindle's installed, we're going to do some simple tests on the spindle. I may have to, um, I may have to reassemble the machine a little bit in order to do those uh, tests. But I mean, it is what it is, right? So that's kind of where I'm going with that. And uh, again, I want to apologize for the amount of time that it takes uh, to release um, uh, these videos and other videos. I you know how it is. I got uh, plenty of other things that I want to share uh, with you. Um, I think the next thing I'd really like to video is my boiler. I've, I've done a sample run on the boiler uh, for my Kenneth Wells engine and it, uh, it, it worked out okay. Uh, and so I think I'm ready to uh, get the regular boiler soldered up and, and release the next part of that uh, so that I can just move on. I really would like to get that little engine done. Uh, 
just because I have other things that I want to do uh, and uh, uh, probably will move away from the toys for a little bit although I will do the will most likely do the Kenneth Wells traction engine I don't know if I'll record it or not but uh, I think I'll do it for my own satisfaction to give to a grandbaby someday all right so enough uh, rambling and babbling for me so if uh, you guys are interested in um, uh, a little bit of book binding for the shop you know how to how to do that um, Put, let me know down in the comments um, if uh, any of you guys have experienced scraping um, and have any other suggestions of tools and things like that or as I uh, move along please drop those um, down in the uh, comments and Patrick uh, if you're listening brother um, uh, I always appreciate your input always appreciate your input and in art I always appreciate your input you guys have got loads and loads of life experience that you have shared uh, off and on with me that has been very very helpful and very rewarding and I just want to thank you for that so if you guys are watching and uh, you got some uh, specific ideas for help uh, let me know Art uh, you I uh, I think you said that you had some information on the break-in of Timken bearings uh, and, and that sort of stuff and and you may have sent it to me but you know you know I, I probably couldn't find my head if it wasn't attached you know uh, if you have that, will you send that to me again, please? All right, so other than that, it's enough rambling and babbling for me. Um, thank you for watching. If you find it helpful or entertaining or something like that, you know, uh, please consider clicking like or subscribe and share with your friends. And other than that, have a blessed day.